So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse just came out and given the fact that this is a sequel to what's considered to be one of the best Spider-Man movies ever made, I thought that I would share my thoughts on it. Now per usual, I won't be spoiling anything that you can't already find in the trailers or in the previous movie, so let's get into it. So for context, this movie picks up 16 months after the last movie into the Spider-Verse. We now see a Miles Morales who's taller and growing into himself as both a young man and as Brooklyn's only Spider-Man. But things change the moment that his best friend and and his love interest, Gwen Stacy, approaches him to complete a mission to save all of the universes from a mysterious new villain who could cause a catastrophic disaster. So Miles accepts the challenge as him and Gwen go through the multiverse together to meet its protectors, a group of spider people known as the Spider Force. However, once Miles gets there, he finds himself at odds with the Spider Force crew on how to handle the threat. So that's the basic plot of the film. And now with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and give my thoughts on the film personally and then from a Christian perspective. All right, so right away, one thing that I really liked about this movie was that the style and the animation improved even more from the last film. If you watched the last film, you probably thought that that was phenomenal. However, this one even takes it up another notch. With the emphasis on live action and special effects that saturate most of Hollywood today, this movie reminded me of the incredible possibilities that can come through imaginative animation. The art style wasn't just expanded in this movie, but it really brought uniqueness to each character in a really engaging way. Now, personally, for me, I'm honestly not really a big fan of multiverse movies because I tend to find them jumbling and confusing. But with this movie, I was actually surprised that they managed to increase the scale of the actual Spider-Verse and incorporate even more characters and themes while also keeping an engaging pace throughout the entire movie. Thematically, it was also refreshing to see positive depictions of fatherhood, caring parents, and masculinity that wasn't demonized. And lastly, I have to mention that just like they did with the first movie, they again did an exceptional job with the soundtrack for this film. I really do think that they managed to live up to the hype of this film. And although I personally still like the first one more, I think I'm in the minority here because most of the people that I talk to thinks that this one surpasses the previous one. Oh, and by the way, there were a ton of references to past Spider-Man movies throughout the entire film. So if you're a longtime Spider-Man fan, then this movie is basically a love letter to you. Now, with that being said, my only real gripe with the film is that there were some mixing issues that were going on throughout the film. Initially, I thought it was probably due to my hearing issues or maybe even my specific theater, but apparently this is a problem that some viewers have reported to having during their screenings. So I'm not sure if they fixed it by now, but that's something to just be aware of. All right, now that I've gotten my personal thoughts out the way, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my thoughts from a Christian perspective. Now, when it comes to movies like this, there's obviously a lot of themes that are covered with the characters. And in this one, it's from the importance of family family, to the difficulties of parenting, the search for belonging, realizing one's own identity, sacrificing for the greater good, and many more things. So there was definitely a lot to digest with this movie, and although I think that they threaded these themes together well, what really resonated with me most as a Christian was the way that the film depicted suffering in a person's life. Now, of course, if there's one line that we usually take away from seeing a Spider-Man movie, it's that with great power comes great responsibility. By the way, I wonder where they got that from. And another thing that we take away from all of the Spider-Man movies is that the death of a loved one is typically a pivotal moment in each Spider-Man's character development. And then I looked at my uncle and- Uh, let me guess. He died. Okay, but honestly, a staple in the Spider-Man franchise is the transformational power of suffering. One thing that I think that this movie does is that it captures the different ways that we can respond to suffering and the impact that those different responses have on us and others. In the previous movie, we saw Miles experience the tragedy of losing his beloved uncle Aaron, who had a huge influence on him. And in light of that tragedy, we see him manage to find the strength to move forward and to find himself, culminating in the famous leap of faith that starts his true journey as Brooklyn's only Spider-Man. This movie continues that transformational journey spurred by the tragic loss of his uncle. We see that although Miles has experienced great suffering, he responded to the suffering in a way that made him stronger and ultimately strong enough to help with the suffering of others. And we also see that despite many obstacles from people and life that he faces, he also learns to push through those struggles, pushing him to persevere through the adversity to be stronger, both for his own destiny and to help others as he continues to grow himself. This parallels with the Apostle Paul in Romans when he says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, 
hope. Or even James when he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. But what makes this growth so powerful in the film is that growth isn't the only response to suffering that we see in the film. Passivity is another response that we see with some characters who believe that since our suffering is inevitable, then we should just let it happen and do nothing to try to avert it. And while on the surface, this might seem insightful like some Eastern religions might suppose, ultimately, it only leads to being stagnant and preserving the status quo. And lastly, even more clearly, we also see the opposite response to suffering through the antagonist in the film. Rather than allowing their suffering to transform them for the positive, instead they respond in bitterness and vindictiveness. Like the old saying goes, pain can either make us bitter or make us better, depending on how we choose to respond to the pain that affects us, which is something that the film demonstrates. Now after leaving the movie, I started thinking about this, and I started to think about how even in my own life I've had different responses to suffering, whether that be growth or bitterness, and I also thought about why I responded in the way that I did. I thought about how hard times can either be opportunities for us to grow and move closer to God, or for us to move further away from God and grow in bitterness. But one thing that really influences how we respond relies heavily on our assumptions about God and Christianity before tragedy inevitably strikes. For me, what I found is that in the times that I was most likely to respond bitterly when suffering, those are the times that at least at some level, I have this assumption that I deserve better from God or that I don't deserve for these bad things to happen to me. When I think this way, I feel like there's an injustice being done to me that I don't deserve and that it's my obligation to get even with the world through my negative outlook. I thought about how holding on to bitterness and cynicism can really be a way for me to feel like I'm getting justice in some way. And while I understand the natural inclination to think this way, I still think that it's based on a faulty assumption. The reason why is because if Christianity is true, then I don't think that we can expect to never have bad things happen to us. But instead, we should expect God to bring out the greatest good from those bad things. So when I choose to look at my sufferings as something that I can learn from or that God can bring good from, it becomes harder for me to be bitter because I'm aware that I don't deserve all of the grace and all of the good things that God has already graciously given me in this life. It's then that I can remind myself that God works everything out for the good of those that love him. But the thing that really brings me the most clarity when I think about situations like this is when I think about how the only one who truly deserved nothing bad to happen to him and yet suffered more than any of us, it was through his suffering that God was able to bring about the greatest good, the salvation of the world through his suffering. When I think about how Jesus suffered, even though he didn't deserve it, I'm reminded that I'm only saved because of what he did and not because I deserved it. He got what he didn't deserve, so that way I could get what I didn't deserve. Now when I think about my salvation, it makes it a lot harder for me to think of myself as being wronged, especially when my wrongs are what his suffering paid for. So with that being said, pain in this life is inevitable. But just like we see in the movie, if we respond to it in the right way, then God can bring about our growth and maturity as we persevere in our walk. So therefore, if you choose to see this movie, I want you to challenge yourself to think about what painful things in your life you could be failing to see the lessons or the blessings in. If you do, I think you'll be surprised how much you might grow. So ultimately, I thought that this was a great movie that lived up to the hype. And if you've seen it, go ahead and let me know your thoughts down below. But the next time you find yourself reacting to suffering by getting bitter instead of better, what are you going to say? What do you mean?